Welcome back. It's still the breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. And now we're set for a second conversation. Uh, of course, we started things off by looking at low voter turnout. But let's move on to the violence, the violence and uh, voter suppression, which marred last Saturday's governorship and state house of assembly elections. No fewer than 17 people were reported dead or killed in various acts of electoral violence in Delta State, Lagos State, River State, Cross River State, Niger State, Aquabum State, Oshun State, and Benue States as violence, apathy, disenfranchisement of voters marred uh, Saturday's governorship and state house of assembly elections. You know, despite the security architecture uh, the Lagos State Police Command and other sister agencies supposedly put in place uh, sponsored hoodlums, overrun, overrun the state as they unleashed violence on voters and officials of the Independent National Electoral Commission. From Surilere to Oshodi, Mal 12, Ejibu, Bokno, Okafa, Bolade Oshodi, Surilere, Amor, Dauphin, Berga, Ojo, Agility, or Agility, Ago Palace Way, Okota, Mushi, Gondo, Ibeju, Leki, Alimosho, Ijegun, Ijesha, Ikeja, Magodo, uh, Ilegushi, Fadei, and many other areas in Lagos. These talks ran amok, unchecked, you know, backed by local militia, local touts, sometimes local traditional rulers. The hoodlums brutalized, maimed voters and uh, who were not uh, out to vote for a particular party. In most cases, the All Progressives Congress. Now, while three people were supposed or suspected to have been killed in different parts of Lagos State, including a 68-year-old man who was allegedly killed at uh, Shomulu at a polling unit, hundreds of others, including celebrities, were brutalized with their property destroyed before they were prevented from voting. An unidentified suspected hoodlum uh, was also feared killed by security agent after he allegedly snatched ballot papers at Star Time Estate, uh, Jamtok Ago Palace Way. However, the police, uh, Lagos State Police Commissioner um, Idou Onwohua uh, also has come out to debunk uh, a social media report that a thug was shot dead in a polling unit saying there was no such incident uh, in Lagos State. Before the elections, the chairman of Lagos State Parks and Garages Committee, MC Luomo, as is popularly known, um, had openly warned opponents of the All Progressives Congress in Lagos State to stay away uh, from the polls, to stay at home and not come out to vote. A statement, the police public relations headquarters, um, officer, force headquarters, Nigeria Police Abuja, described as a mere joke in an interview a night before the election. We'll pause at this point to introduce our guests uh, who analyze this issue, We're talking about uh, violence and voter suppression that marred Saturday's elections. Honorable Dr. Shinawa Ibrahim is a public affairs analyst. He joins us via Zoom in Lagos. Dr. Shinawa, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Um, before the presidential, but before we even go into that discussion, I'd like our, uh, uh, our team to just roll the tape. And um, maybe we'll start with that um, start time estate uh, um, at Go Palace Way, where some hoodlums came out to, you know, uh, to chase voters away, hitting them with sticks and chairs and all that. I even saw a woman who was trying to escape for their life. And we'll move from that. After that, we'll play uh, another video where the residents fought back. Some went to bring dogs, you know, some building sticks too, and, and stones to chase away uh, the, the thugs. Um, so maybe, can we roll the tape, please? Nasso! Nasso! And the Chris! Nasso! One of the towns are down. All of the towns. All of the towns are down. Look at him. He's lying lifeless. Right here is that time message. He's down. Look at him. 
look at him. You see his life. These are the people that came to take over ballot box. They came to carry ballot box. He's down. Look at him, lifeless. Look at him. I must debunk that insinuation that we have been entitled or we have been in latest. No. We have been organizing for at least election 2015, 2019. We have a designated polling unit, designated by INEC, called VGC Park. And we came here this morning as we normally do to write our names down and get our numbers so that we can vote. Then after doing that, we were informed that no, that we are not going to be voting here. We have set this place up. You can see the canopies, you can see everything, trying to make it better than it was on the 18th. Uh, for the presidential election, I forget what day that is. And, and then we were told that it's going to be happening at the gate. We went to the gate. Said, what are you doing here? And they said no, that, they are, they are, that we are going to be voting at the gate. And we, we now asked them. By whose authority? When was this changed? Because on the INEC portal, it is still designated VGC Park as the polling unit, so it's illegal to set up a park. And so, following the events of the last presidential election, people were suspicious, emotional, uh, upset, and uh, concerned. Uh, and so, we had back and forth with the INEC officials, and ultimately, the wreck um, uh, came to the site and is here presently uh, and we've accepted that we should use the site that we always use, which is where we are standing on now. The question is, we haven't started voting now. It's um, almost 2 o'clock and we understand that they want to stop voting by 7 p.m. Um, according to the reports from the NEC, or from the wreck. So uh, we're a bit concerned about that. But, uh, that's where we are. All right, uh, Dr. Shilowo, you, you've seen the videos. The last two you saw, the first was uh, Olumide Apata, former chairman of the Nigeria Bar Association, who is a resident of Victoria Garden City, uh, where there were some incidents. Another one was um, uh, the governorship candidate of ADC. We'll talk about VGC in a bit. But... Before we go to that, we, we saw, as it was in the presidential election, in the governorship election, prior to the election, we saw, you know, uh, the police coming out, you know, to show, uh, in a show of strength. Um, we saw the pictures on the front pages of national dailies, you know, the military and all that. And um, what, where are all these, these operatives? Uh, we heard the police saying that 400,000 security operatives will be deployed, even though we know the police strength in this country is is no more is no more than three hundred thousand and or just over three hundred thousand, you know. We saw civil defense operatives on front pages of papers in a full kit, you know, with rifles and you know riot protection equipment. So, where were all these security operatives? Those virtuals uh, that we just watched uh, was you know pathetic, contempt, and uncalled for. Uh, first, I will address the first footage, the uh, timeline estate in Okota. Uh, I will condemn both sides for the estate residents to go to, to use the law, to refuse to use the law, the tools of the law to address the issue by taking laws into their hands, uh, is condemnable, is uncivilized, you know. Uh, we expect those people who live in such estates to be much more educated that, to know that, you know, using brutal force or killing anybody in the estates is a criminal offense under Nigerian Constitution and legal state law. However, all these, you know, abnormalities, you know, is caused by Nigerian police who are inefficient, who are, you know, unprofessional in terms of election management. I think the IG needs to resign, and I will call for the IG to resign, not the Commissioner of Police now. If we have been mobilized by, according to the National Security Advisor, General Mongono, to prepare for an election over 24 months ago, 
and deployment of officers to, you know, to notable spots like River State, like Kano, like Lagos, and you are seeing all this kind of, you know, you know, you know, you know, massive, you know, uh, violent. I'm not going to attach it to any party. Labour parties are prepared. Um, PDP also are prepared. You know, APC and the rest of them. You can imagine this footage is very distractious. The estate residents, they 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 have their tools. They have their ammunition, including, you know, um, um, dogs to attack anybody. I want to ask this estate residents to tell us what other, what, 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 um, what um, evidence do they have to know who is woodlums and who is not woodlums, who lives in the estate and who does not live in the estate, for them to go up in her, having sticks, machetes, dogs, rocks, to the extent of killing anybody, this is highly condemnable. However, we need to extend the conversation. 2023 election has come and gone now. What is the next plan? Heineck has their fair share. You know, Nigerian security architecture is already collapsed, which we have been calling for. For state to have their state police, which I believe Ashwaju will do this time around, will take some brutal decisions. For states to have at least a minimum or you know extensive autonomy in terms of you know economy, security, architecture, and the likes. So this is definitely sad for Nigeria. It's a sad day for Nigerians to be you know viewing in this kind of you know vicious footage of people deliberately. With rocks, with planks, dogs attacking. If you are, there are here hoodlums, there is process to undo such character through the law. And it's so sad for me to yeah, see this. Yeah, I'm, I'm you can just, imagine if you have yeah. a jungle ones at home, which are 13, 14, 15, 16, or 17. So, sorry to interrupt. Um, yes. I'm so sorry. The, the, way, the two videos were meant to air. Um, so that you could have a, a, a proper view of what happened at okay. that uh, at that uh, Star Times estate. Unfortunately, the first one has not been uploaded, and I'm waiting for it to be. Um, um, but the first video, which I hope we can air uh, as soon as possible, quickly as possible, will show you that the people, the estate residents, were acting in self-defense because these. These dogs came out to to attack them for simply exercising their franchise. They got into their estate and were beating everybody, including women, including women. And, and the particular person on the floor, who is, I don't know if he's alive or not, um, uh, actually carried a, a chair and was beating a particular woman, you know, uh, who could have lost her life. So. Um, would you blame the residents for pushing back? And I would like to see. The, I would like to. I'm, I'm giving I, I my. I'm giving my judgment. and you know. Yes, I, stand I know. On I what know. you are showing me it's right been, now. It's not being aired, um, I'm giving my judgment. I expect to see the other footage. Yes. Then we yes. can take it from there. However, you are not supposed. Nobody have you the know, monopoly of killing another person or monopoly mm. no, of. But but but, but you know? doctor, yeah, doctor. You know what? The, the residents didn't kill this this. Uh, 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 person, from what we're told, um, and of course the police have come out to say they're not aware of any. But there's a video that shows a gunshots being fired. You know, um, when the residents came out, the, I think they had some mopos in this in the estate, and they came and they fired some shots. Uh, so the the narrative is that the bullets from from the mopos uh, uh, gun may have led to the death of this 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 uh, thug but the police have said they are not aware that anyone was shot and killed you know so we we yet to get information did he die if he died was it from beating or was he shot and killed um i mean so in, in such an instance when my, my brother this footage yeah. you are showing me shows that there is a physical attack no, I'm, I'm telling guy. you. I, yeah, I'm telling I you. I have, I've seen this video. My son showed me this. No, no. I, I'm stuff. telling you. I have. I have. Uh, we have footages we can show you. Um, 
like I said, when I was introducing and asking you the question, I told you about two videos I wanted you to comment on. Um, the one where the thugs came into the estate so we could see the beginning, and then the one where the residents pushed back so we can see the end. Uh, unfortunately, one was shown to you, the other wasn't shown. And I'm saying there's a third video that shows police officers, uh, a policeman in the estate coming with their guns and shooting. You know, maybe either to chase the thugs away or disperse the crowd, I do not know. Um, so, so let's, let's talk about the build-up, the build-up. Um, but before we talk about the build-up, I, I, I asked the question earlier. Um, we see a lot of show of strength by security agencies. I remember even before the presidential election, we saw a motorcade of uh, military men, of soldiers, you know, <laughs> moving on some streets. Um, they go around doing show of force in River State, not just the Army, even the Navy went on the road walk, you know, in the show of strength. And, but during the election, where do they disappear to, you know? <laughs> That's the question I want to ask him. You know, the Nigerian police force, who is the lead agency, to, you know, for any election or exercise, are failed woefully. They are nowhere to be found. Look at River State. The PDP government there or the Hunter government there is just, you know, molesting voters. Look at what is going on also in the Southwest. You know, the Nigerian police has failed. All this show of force that you have been talking, we've been seeing this since 1993. All this show of force coming out to display some, you know, old gadgets in their, in their hammer. And on the election day, where the Nigerian people needs them to hack decisively, man all the polling units, all the hot spots, they are nowhere to be found. So I expect that with the huge sum of money that was deployed to Nigerian police and other sister agencies, they need to be questioned. We need to ask them, what is going on? We need to talk to them. Where are you guys? The Nigerian citizen the Nigerian people have the right, the constitutional right to be protected. And they are left without protection. And you come out to show, do show of force. Show of force for what? Show so, of force so, that so, cannot so, translate so, to security yeah, of but, but, and property. Dr. Shiro, what happens? You know, like, where are they? Where do they go to? We know the police are... I'm not, I'm not a member of police force. That's why we are calling Muiwa Aladejobi, who is the spokesperson, to come and explain to us. Where are your men? You are doing show of force around the street of Lagos, in Abuja, in Kano, in Kaduna, in River State, in Cross River State, and on election day, most of the police officers have gone back to their bedroom and to their wives to sleep. And they will come out and say the federal government is not paying them allowance. Can you imagine that? If this is, you can do a polling exercise on this topic, you will find out that most Nigerians are dissatisfied and unhappy with the Nigerian police. And they called it. I think the suggestion that we have to make, and we'll do the press conference, is that is the, the, Nigerian, the Nigerian law should not affirm Nigerian police as a lead agency in Nigeria. It has to be inclusive. All the agencies of security architecture of this country has the right to protect Nigerian citizens on election day. This, of it, this extends to INEC should go back to the drawing board. 2027 is just around the corner. When you finish an election cycle, immediately after releasing the results, there has to be a committee to start the planning committee and public policy committee to commence immediate planning. We thank God the IRF worked yesterday. A lot of people could see what's going on. But the security in the country is zero. I'm grateful that you can confirm. I can confirm. So do we do we it's need some hard. reforms, Dr. Shinwa? Do we need there's there's some reforms? That was rushing, that yeah. a police officer was sleeping on duty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guy was long gone, sleeping. But I can't verify that. You know, this internet, uh, this thing. They just brought it to my notice, but I was just laughing that, well, look at this guy. Dr. Shinwa, I, I, I have, um, just, just to, you know, you've talk, we're talking about police. I also included the, the Nigerian um, 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 armed forces, the military, uh, the army, sorry, the, the air force, and even the navy, you know, that we saw do a, a road walk with for a show of strength in Port Harcourt. But I do not know where they were on election day. So where do these people disappear? Because the police alone, 
they said they are not enough and they, they will need some, some assistance. That's why we, we had probably the amount, a number of policemen deployed 400,000 or a number of security officers deployed 400,000. Um, so I wonder where the army disappears to, okay, and uh, the Navy and all these other people. But let's talk about the police. In some you states, in some states, the politicians have said that their parties, opposition parties now, are not competing against the ruling parties alone. They are competing against uh, also the police. In other words, the police have now become an actor, an active participant in the politics. We've seen videos of policemen in collaboration with party officials or thugs um, steal ballot boxes, steal ballot papers, provide protection for thugs when they are chasing away voters. In fact, in Akwa Ibom State in the presidential election, some soldiers, these are the few soldiers we heard about, apprehended a bus filled with INEC officials and policemen and other men in fake military uniform. So it's been proven that the police are active in the politics on election day. What is going on? Why don't we have a police that are neutral and are just there to keep the law rather than break the law? Dr. Shino. It, it is, you know, the, the answer is very simple. This is no news to us. You know, if we have been watching election in this country, you know, you will know that. Let's even take the one that is closer, 1999 today. Police has been alleged to be the major actor in any electoral violence, assisting, you know, one party or the other to manipulate the process. You understand? And what I expect the government or the National Security Advisor to do is to develop a background check on all these officers that is mounting all the states. You can imagine you will say in River State, for instance, you are deploying, you are deploying three AIGs to a state. And at the end of the day, you find out that a particular party will come out. Where the party is losing, it will tell the boys to go there, you know, and disclose the voters burn the ballot boxes because they know that INEC will cancel that polling unit. The PU voters definitely will be, will be, will be will, uh, 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 the right to vote will be suppressed. So these are government policies. These are government public policies that has to put in place to ensure that any policeman, found, any police officer found wanting, either by independent you know, police monitoring or compliance units will be dealt with publicly. Because from the research, most of the police officers believe that the only time they can get extra funds, cheap funds, make huge money is during the election. And mostly they go for the highest bidder. Everybody must be patriotic in this country, irrespective of the political affiliation you are having. You are Nigeria first and you need to protect your country so the police system the system of policing in this country is corrupt you can imagine you go to the united kingdom you go to canada at the end of the day when you, when they are conducting the election you find out there's no pol no single police officer on guard on duty everybody goes in and votes so i make needs to hop the game they brought out the the vivas vivas this time around by 2026, Nigeria should be able to vote. Once you accredite yourself, the system to bring out all the parties involved, and you praise the party you want immediately. Immediately, you are, you are accredited. It goes into the system straight. There is no manual collation. But, but, no but, but, so but, 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 but Dr. Shinawa, sorry to inter interrupt, yes. sir. Um, yes, okay, I think needs to up his game. But the fact, the fact is... Anik right now had up the game and all people sat down and said, OK, let us see where people will vote and where the voting strength of the opposition is in the presidential election. In Lagos State, for instance, OK, we've seen the presidential election. This is where the voting strength was. We know we can't lose the governorship election because we have only one Lagos State. Now we're going to target these areas where the opposition has a higher, higher votes and make sure people don't vote. And that was the strategy.
So if we have electronic yeah, voting, but, but, but that was a strategy. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't confirm that. No, 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 no. Sir, sir, even even a, cha a a youngster, a young chap who just sees, will know that's a strategy. Because uh, but, no, this Dr. Is we, we saw thugs this going. Is not of law. Can Sorry. you mention the party that is suppressing one another in, in, the, in most of their popular? No, we don't know, Dr. Shinowo. We don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Good. I don't think even Good. the public Good. knows. So let's not go there. I'm sure nobody knows who is suppressing who. But I'm saying that we have seen systematic, coordinated, planned, targeted attacks on voters in particular areas where particular parties have a voting strength. And the attacks have been, have been against, against the vote, voters who are mostly supporting a particular party. Because we have reporters on the field. I'm not sitting here talking, saying what I do not know. We have reporters on the field. So when we, we talk, we're not talking because, you know, in ignorance. We know what is going on. But let's not go there. Let's not go there. Let, let's go there. We need so to so, go I, there I, so I'm, I'm saying can, the point I'm making. No, no, no. Please, sir. let me learn. Let me learn. Yeah, no, Please, I, me I also ask my question, Dr. Shinobo. Even if we okay. have you know, electronic voting, it it's will pale into its significance if a politician can order thugs in a state to go to the areas where he feels the opposition have more voters and chase them away. If you chase them away, who is going to do the voting electronically? You know what? Everything still boils down to, you know, more, let me tell you the ingredient of, you know, politics. Politics is all about scheming. It's a, it's a game. It's about me coming out to tell you that here I'm in charge. It's about you telling me that, doctor, I'm sorry, I'm in charge. You understand? It's always a game. Look at United States. The Trump side will tell you that all the them all that Democratic Party has been doing is to suppress and to take him out of the way. He is also is coming out with different tactics to ensure that he's on the ballot next year and he wins back the presidency. So politics is always a game anywhere in the world. It's always a game. Now, what the government, who is going to be the referee, is to ensure that both sides are protected under the law and ensure that no one will have a daunting advantage than the other. It's always a game. That's why I ask you, who is the party? Are you saying party A is suppressing B? Are you saying party B is suppressing B? For instance, in Kano State, Pankwansu won virtually all the House of Reps. Out of the two senators, he won three, he won two. You can imagine the House of Assembly that is going on, unconfirmed report in Kano now. The guy is telling anybody in this country that I am in charge of Kano. He's not, that, he's not an incumbent governor. I think the last time this guy was a governor was 2007, 2011. And he still has this mozu, these political wings to mozu a sitting governor and produce. So if anybody is telling you that there is no progress in the last election, I tell you that person is a liar. There is a huge progress. There is a huge and humongous progress. Out of the nine, nine sitting governors that contested the election in this country, maybe about three of them returned, elected. About six out of them are, are beaten by unknown you know, newcomers. Look at what happened in there. So, so, Dr. Shinwa, Dr. Shinwa, are you saying that there was no violence in, in, in Saturday's governorship and state house of similar elections? It, the, the question is that there will always be one intruding side or the other. But what is the strength of police to capture all this violence? That's the question. Violence or no violence, I can't judge. It's the police that will come out. It's the security. When, when you when you say you can't judge, what do you mean, sir? How do you mean you can't judge? I can't say there's a violence anywhere. Where I voted, there was no violence. I went there just, you know, just having a good time. Everybody voted and we go back to their house. Okay, so so I, 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 are you saying no, 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 was, are you saying there was, was no I'm yesterday. telling you, sir. Are you saying there was no widespread yes. violence? I'm telling you, as no, a as no, no, no. as in, as, in a, which, as a in report which, as a news person who has in reporters around the, country, the field in Lagos State and in around the country, the country that there was the widespread South violence. But if you want to tell me in Lagos State, for instance, where we're based, no, 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 know, no, 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 no widespread, please. No, okay, no fine. So, 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 please. but you're saying that you don't know about other polling centers, you know. Or uh, um, uh, you know other polling units and all that you know about where you were. So 
um, if if I tell you how, what's your your information that you used to now judge and say, though there was no, we didn't have widespread, uh, you know. I will give you the statistic. Can I give you the statistic? Please yeah. let me land. Yes, please, please. Lagos, I'm, I'm very interested. Lagos State, Lagos State has close to over almost about three hundred thousand three hundred thousand police units. I guess. So how will you say because there is a slight issue in Okota, in just a, a constituency, a state constituency, and you are calling that widespread. In VTC, where vote, vote, voting was, you know, went down yesterday, there was no issue there. In other places on Saturday, where voting, virtually everywhere, I, I listened to the commissioner of police. He said, you can't say that's a widespread. I listened to the gentleman who is the commissioner of police. So you can't say because there's an issue in Nakota. I'm expecting you to bring other footage from other locations, like Alimosho, like Bagada, like Ikeja, like Parkview, like, you know, Oshodi, where you, everybody believes it's a hot spot. In, I, I, in when you started, I mentioned, yeah, Dr. Shino, when, when you started, when you started, I mentioned, Dr. Shino, when you started, I mentioned Surulere, all the way to Oshodi. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Mount 12. Yes. I mentioned the Jibo. I mentioned Bokno. I mentioned Okafa. I mentioned Bolade Oshodi. I mentioned Amoa Dauphin, which is a whole local government area. I mentioned Bega. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Ojo. I mentioned Agility. I mentioned Agopales Way. I mentioned Okota. I mentioned Moshi. I mentioned the Gondo. I mentioned the Bejo Lake. Agopales Way is Okota. Yes, no problem. I mentioned the Bejo Lake. I mentioned Alimosho. I mentioned the Jegun, Ijesha, Ikeja, Magodo. In Legoshi, Fadei, and there are many areas for want of time I won't want to go into. And you're telling me we just had uh, a few very limited. You, you were just reading this on of, the news. Can you bring evidences like the I'm one not just reading this on news. Before. I have evidence. Let's bring, I have, I have, we have evidence for that. To Nigerian people to it's, see. It's, these are we the have, we have reporters, picture. sir. We have reporters. So, so I mean, no, you, you're entitled to say what you want to say, which is that we mm. didn't have a lot of violence in Lagos State. It was just limited. To how many incidents would you say? These are just these are just normal occurrence in you know political okay. season that you find that there is one you know scuffle in one place or the other. But you can in electoral management system, in risk management, where I am a specialist in, you cannot say because the one point two zero percent of you know failure of security capture, you can say that is you know widespread. Widespread is not like that. Okay. Widespread is when the 60 or 50 percent of Lagos State is captured with violence, physical violence, with evidence to prove that there is a physical violence. That is when we can say the Nigerian police has failed. Though we have, I'm, I'm using my analogy and the mapping of the entire country. I'm not specifically saying Lagos State. If you are saying there is in Okota, Okota is a go palace way. So if that's just even a, a an health city, not even a local government. Out of 20 local government. Okay. 54 ICDs. All right. So um, the, you asked me for a video. Um, um, please permit us to air that the before, you know, when you saw those dogs chasing the, uh, the thugs, um, you were asking mm -hmm. to see what happened before so you could have a fair assessment. So we'll roll that tip and then I'll come back in. Drew is our, our second guest, who is this journalist, Vazum. <laughs> It comes to Qatar election in the Seriously. See in the Sit on the narrow state. This is serious. The cops cut our election in the state. Okay, 
Okay, so, so Dr. Shino, um, uh, uh, you can see that the, the guys who were chased in the second video are the ones you can see now who are chasing uh, voters uh, with planks, with sticks, with bottles. Um, in fact, the, the young man who was seen on the floor, you know, in that first video, I was sh Dr. Ashina, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. So you just look at the video. You see him with a chair, okay, and you can see him chasing. You see that he hitting that woman and, you know, hitting some other persons and now going after, I don't know who he's going after, with that chair, hitting another person. You know, so he, that's a, that's a chap who is on the floor. You can see he's chasing the lady again. Um, so, so in such an instance, what are, what are the, um, you know, the residents to do? Well, we'll leave it at that uh, um, while I introduce our next guest, uh, who is uh, standing by. Um, Mohamed can Abdullahi. Can I respond to that? Y yes, in a jiffy, please. In a jiffy, so I can bring it in the next Okay. Yes. You know, still, this is not widespread. This is just a fracas within a community. Now, where is the Nigerian police? That's the question. That's why I insist that Nigeria's police has failed and that you account to Nigerian people the humongous sum that has been deployed to Nigerian police for election management as a lead agency in security management of this election. The IG should explain or he should resign. That is my call. I'm calling on him to resign because he's due for resignation, he's due, he's due for retirement. So he should go back home. I, from the footage you are showing me, no single police. And each state command has been mobilized to tune of millions of nerves. So who are you supposed to be playing? It's the Nigerian police and the high team calling on him again to resign and go back home because his retirement is due already. And it should be another new guy, an intelligent guy who can manage the security of this country to come to the side of Nigerian police. So this is a pure failure of security. It will be uncomfortable for you to say you want to allege anybody. So the IG should go back home. He should resign okay. um, for uh, his monumental failure uh, and Baloo promises he has made to Nigeria. Th thank he you should very go much. Back home. Thank you, Dr. Shiro. We, we have Mohamed Abdullahi, uh, who is uh, joining in us now from Senegal. Um, Mohamed Abdullahi, I think he's in Dakar, I believe. Can you hear me, please? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. I can hear you loud and clear. All right. Um, uh, we we saw we saw um, in the uh, in the in the days leading up to this governorship election, um, some individuals come out to tell people not to vote, and to, if they come out, they come out at their on their, at their risk. Um, but supporters of particular party, opposition parties, and members of particular tribes were warned to stay away, stay at home, stay out of Lagos politics. There's a there's a there's a there's a clip or a picture of a tweet that I'd like. Um, uh, production team to put on the air. I don't know if they have that picture um, of that tweet by uh, Bayo Onanuga. Bayo Onanuga happens to be um, one of the spokesmen for sp spokesperson for the People's Democratic Party's uh, sorry, the All Progressive Congress uh, Presidential Campaign Council. Um, so we saw what MC Oloma put out in the video, and then we saw the ethnic. Um, coloration that was brought to this particular uh, election. What Bayo Nanuga says, and please, can we put that, that, that tweet on the screen? Um, I sent it some time ago. It says, let 2023 be the last time uh, of Igbo interference in Lagos politics. Let there be no repeat in 2027. Lagos is like Anambra, Imo, any Nigerian state. It is not no man's land, not federal capital territory, it is your land. Mind your business. So this is just capturing some of what MC Olomo was trying to say. Um, what, what do you think these guys, uh, especially of the, from the All Progressives Congress, uh, who want people not to come out, especially supporters of Labour Party and people who are from the Igbo ethnic group in Lagos, stay at home? Do you think they they bear some response? They should bear some responsibility for the thuggery, the attacks, you know, uh, that we saw on Saturday? Yes, of course. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that uh, we're, we're, we're gradually turning into a very lawless society where people can actually uh, come on air, whether via social media even or even the traditional media, to issue threats to fellow Nigerians. The last time I checked, 
uh, I understand that uh, as a Nigerian, whether you are of uh, Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, <clears throat> you are free according to the constitutions of Nigeria to live anywhere you so wish to live in any part of Nigeria, and you are granted the powers of association. You are granted the powers to exercise your civic right uh, independently. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you are granted the powers to vote for whomever you like. And you are also granted the powers to be voted for anywhere you choose to be. And that is the beauty of uh, democracy, you know. So, but it is quite unfortunate reading uh, and, uh, and experiencing what we what we what we call uh, uh, an election uh, back home in Nigeria is 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 really unfortunate. Uh, mind you, this is not uh, to castigate a particular party. That is my little um, disagreement with you. Uh, uh, it it cut across uh, both sides. In fact, all of the parties. Uh, what they do is that uh, in their very stronghold, they actually manipulate each other. You know, they, they try to outtreat each other, they try to outsmart each other, they try to make it, they try to stifle opposition in each of their uh, strongholds. So yes, if you take uh, the issue of Lagos uh, particularly, yes, um, it's quite unfortunate that uh, a particular, uh, a, a particular, uh, someone that you might describe as a tout or even someone as a, a non-state actor wields such power to, to issue threats to, you know, non-indigenous, if I may use that word, of Lagosians, uh, of Lagos, uh, threatening them not to come out to vote if they are not voting for a particular party. And then it's quite laughable as well that uh, the Nigerian police force will come out to justify uh, or confirm such a threat to, to, to say it's a joke. You know, I, I read uh, the, the comments from the... Uh, police PPRO from the headquarters mentioning the fact that uh, what the allegedly talk or allegedly tout mentioned or was saying was a joke. Nigerians should, or Lagosians should take it as a joke. It's quite funny, you know. Uh, there's, there's nothing like a joke when you issue threats, you know, to, 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 to fellow uh, citizens and fellow Nigerians. So I think, like you mentioned, it's important that people are brought to book. It's important that people are, faced, are, are made to face the law. You know, it's, it's, it's so important that people, no matter how highly placed they are, are made to face the law. That would, be, that would become a kind of deterrent for others. Let me give you a little uh, example. It's quite uh, outside of this um, uh, uh, discussion, but it's quite important. We all understand that uh, just a month ago, there was an earthquake. Uh, in, in, in Turkey and Syria that claimed the lives of more than 50,000 people. And I tell you, in less than two weeks, the government of Turkey fished out contractors who were given, you know, the opportunity to build such buildings. And there was specification of what they needed to do. They were executed live. It's, it's, it's simple. You don't make, you don't allow people to take laws into their hands. You don't allow people to become lords over other citizens. It breeds, you know, the, the kind of situation that we have in Nigeria, where people can just do whatsoever they want, they say whatsoever they want, and, you know, they are able to suppress other citizens uh, uncontrollably. So I think, like you, like you rightly mentioned, people need to face the consequences of their actions and their, and, their, and their talks. Okay, uh, 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 Mohammed. What, what I was saying was, um, um, of course, it's, it's widespread in different parties. But I was using Lagos State as a case study where the the um, the call on people not to come out to vote clearly came from one party to other parties. It's we can we can sit here and mince words. I'll be being dishonest and lying to say I don't know the parties. We know who they are. Of course, if you go to other states, like in River State, our guest this morning told us that. Uh, uh, it was the other way. It was the PDP supporters. They sent out town criers telling people who would not vote for PDP to stay at home. You know, so it's, I agree in different regions, in different strongholds. So we have a general problem. But in Lagos State, I mean, it's clear. It's documented. Um, so you are saying that the dramatist personnel who whip up these sentiments are uh, responsible directly for the thuggery, in your opinion, and they, they should be arrested. 
Um, I'll go over to Dr. Oshino Ibrahim. Do you agree with uh, Mohammed Abdullahi that these personalities who um, say these things and whip up these sentiments, um, telling people not to come out, you know, and things will happen to you and all that, that they should be held directly responsible for the thuggery and uh, the attendant effect on, on the lives of, of voters? Do you agree with that? Yes, I think I agree with uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, to some extent. Uh, I will still go back to the failure, the monumental failure of the Nigerian police in terms of intelligent government and, you know, fortress to determine the hotspots, you know, of each state of the federation. Um, for instance, in river states, Everybody in this country knows that a particular governor has this, you know, appetite for violence. He has appetite for confrontation. The police and the Nigerian security architecture or system should have ensured that such states is such personality is neutralized. You know. River State is a big state. It has a lot of money. And you can imagine when you have power and money in combined, you could do a lot of things. You know, some governors in Nigeria, some states in Nigeria weaponize poverty. They tend to use the boys. They would deliberately not create jobs for them to have something to do so that during the election, they would give them stipend. The money they couldn't give them during the first, second year they will start giving them during the third and fourth year into the election. For the boys to retain their, you know, source of income, they will be aggressive to do. But however, the Nigerian police has, you know, all, you know, that is required to capture and forecast, you know, these, you know, occurrences. You know, there was a particular AIG that I was talking to. I told him that, does Nigeria police even have what they call, you know, risk enterprise? Do they have the public policy, security public policy desk? Do they measure their risk at all? He said in the last 22 years of his, 24 years of the 24 years of his service, that he never had such thing. I said, go to the Metropolitan Police Department. They have the risk measure committee, headed by a professor. In fact, in Nigeria, from University of East London. Go to New York Police Department. They measure risk at all time. These are professional in risk control and risk management. Who measure the starting hotspot and bring them, you know, the feedback of the situation of things that is going on in the country vis-a-vis -vis to INEC. INEC at this point in time, measure, how do they measure their risk? How did they measure the occurrences that will happen during the elections? Like, you know, logistics issues, mm. like technological mm. issues. Mm. Dr. Shino, because of time, very quickly, sir, issues. sorry about that, please. Uh, because of time, um, some segment part of the, of the country, especially, you know, other Nigerians in Lagos State, um, are feeling that, you know, they may not have a stake again in the country if they uh, will be chased away from voting you know, simply because they are not from that particular part of the country. And I'm sure we can see replicas, like Ibrahim and Mohammed has said, um, in other parts of the country where people from other parts, it's not just in Lagos State. But um, um, some are feeling, okay, we don't have a stake in the country anymore. Um, we might begin to have to think about taking this secession quite seriously. That is, I'm talking about the academia and the intelligentsia now um, of, of, of these ethnicities. Now coming to say, we need to now join this struggle and see how we can just go our way. Um, how, how, how can we navigate that? For me, you know, there's nothing for us to, you know, navigation or intellectual, or I don't know how you call it. We need to increase the security, you know, intelligence of election management system of the country. Do you understand what I mean? So. We still, it's still, everything still boils down to what are we doing to mitigate or improve our security system during the election season? Mm. Okay. Do you okay. see what I mean? Okay. Uh, final word from you, uh, Mohammed. 
how do we navigate the the feelings, you know, the, the divisions that have arisen from the elections to ensure that Nigerians have a sense of belonging? I think it's quite simple. Uh, there are two things for me that I feel uh, sacrosanct uh, for Nigeria and Nigerians, and that is uh, peace and uh, unity. And by peace and unity, I mean everyone should be allowed the right you know to 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 exercise his or, his or her right as a shrine in the constitution so and that also means that uh, if it means uh, if it's important you know for for us to disintegrate because we we've, we've had on this uh, issue of um, yeah we needed to um, we needed unity and then we keep seeing divisiveness every now and then not only on the part of election please it's not just elections that 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 makes nigerian divisive there are so many other issues that we've encountered, we continue to encounter divisiveness uh, among Nigerians. So it's very important that we sit down as a nation, as a people, to review our unity. Okay. If it's better for us to go our separate ways, I think uh, for peace to reign, I think it's, it's, it's an option that we need to look at. All right. Please, All right. Can, I, can I quickly say something? Yeah, we're, out time, we're out of time, sir. We're out of time, sir. Please. Please, I just want Thank to... you so much, gentlemen. Uh, we have to go. Uh, Dr. Oshinawa, Honorable Dr. Oshinawa Ibrahim, a public affairs analyst, and of course, Mohammed Abdullahi, who joined us from Dakar, Senegal. Thank you for your time. My name is Kofi Bartels. The News at 9 is up next. We return tomorrow with more on The Breakfast. Goodbye.